ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the well. Welcome to the Well Podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Well, the inaugural podcast of Abundant Life. And the, the why behind the Well is simply to take a deeper dive into God's Word and into Pastor Phil's Sunday sermon. And so, obviously, Pastor Phil is with us today to take us through. And we're also, it's it's great to be joined by that, that little Texas flavor. Chad Glover is going to be with us. He is the executive teaching pastor and also the Crossroads campus pastor as well. We're excited there that you're with us today. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to we're gonna kick this thing off. Uh, make sure you grab your Bibles, your notebook, uh, something to write with, and uh, just join us. You get to be a part of this table here, not a round table, but the semicircle table where you get to be involved in just discussing of taking this deeper dive into God's Word. So, Pastor Phil, we're starting a, a new sermon series out of Hebrews, right? Jesus is better. Um, that's exciting. This is running till October, is it? It is, man. This is super exciting for a number yeah. of reasons. One, you know, back in the day, a lot of people wouldn't remember this less, but if you go back far enough, we actually used to have a Sunday night service at Abundant Life. That's back when when we loved Jesus, Yeah, man. that's back when we loved the Word of God, and we really <laughs> preached back then. I'm going to say we hey, still thank, do. We just got the schedule these, down a little bit. Thank God for these. Yeah. Here, here's yeah. the point, man. Sunday night service back in the day would allow me to do some teaching that you really yeah. can't do on Sunday mornings. For one thing, you got limited time on Sunday mornings. The transitions are always crucial. Um, you know, Sunday nights, I could preach an hour, and we could do a deeper dive. Right. And so we still do that at Abundant Life. We just do it different than we used to. Yeah. And this is one of the ways we're going to do it. Uh, you, you go through a series like Hebrews, it is a deep dive. Mm. It really is, which is why there's a lot of content there. Uh, and so it is going to take us through the end of September. We're going to open up a new series first thing in October, but we're talking 25 weeks with the supplemental teaching lessons. We're talking something like 30 teaching type sermons so uh there's a lot there so what mm. i'm excited about this podcast specifically is a chance to really um unpack a lot of this content right with great yes. brothers like yourselves Let's go uh give us a chance to really have a conversation not really a teaching sermon <laughs> where people just sit and listen but we're actually able to process this together as others are processing it with us, and to get really to get beneath the surface right. of the Word of God. As I said Sunday, you can't grow spiritually if you're not growing deeper scripturally. Right, amen. Biblical illiteracy, I'm convinced, is why we have a weak, anemic brand of Christianity That's right. mm -hmm. in the 21st century. Right. People have a shallow knowledge of the Word of God, so they have a shallow faith in the God of the Word. In fact, I'll go ahead and just say it now, do it now. Like uh, if you were there Sunday. Come on. Come you on, remember you know. There he the is. The mascot, Jesus. <laughs> there he is. This is ridiculous. Uh -huh. I've never uh, seen one of these before. Bob right? head Jesus. Come when on. I saw yeah. the sermon, like I had, those things actually exist. Yeah, they do. <laughs> wow. Hey, and for most people today, this is this is Jesus. He's not the Messiah, he's a mascot. Apparently that one's a yes <laughs> man too. So <laughs> he's a yes man. Anything that I want to do, Jesus is for. Right? Yeah. So here's the point I'm making, guys. I don't know. Maybe this is just my own goofy humor. I don't know what it is. But when you have a diminished view of the Word of God, you'll have a diminished view of the Son of God. Yeah, amen. When you have a small view of the Word of God, you have a small view of the Son of God. And this right. is what has happened in modern American Christianity. And this is why I can't wait to go through Hebrews together mm -hmm. because Jesus is better. The supremacy, the all-sufficiency, of Jesus Christ is the theme of the book of Hebrews. You can't have a small view of Jesus once you go through the book of Hebrews. That's right. As I was sitting through the sermon Sunday, um, and, and when you brought this out and, and shared about how, you know, our, our walk, our faith walk, how do you get close to God and not be in the Word? I mean, those, those things don't go together. And when you were explaining the book of Hebrews, I mean, there is so much meat in this book is 13 chapters, but yet it's like there's a hundred because there's just so much. And this first sermon was only chapter one, verses one through three. Right. And uh, I mean, Les, I got to just stop. We're getting too serious right now. Talking about, <laughs> when you talk about meat and sermon illustrations, 
I think, think I might know I think everyone going. that's watching this, listening to this, they were, hopefully they were there Sunday. But I just gotta, I gotta confess, Phil, Phil still smells a little bit like a lamb, <laughs> and uh, you smells know, smells like a barnyard in here. Yeah, a bit. Um, a little there's bit. a tinge of lamb urine that I'm smelling right now. I don't know <laughs> if I can say that on this, um, but you had a. I don't know if that's lamb urine <laughs> or if it's just me. It may be. Yeah. Well, remember, uh, this is a podcast where there are, there are people yeah. listening and not watching. Sure. So you well, know, so being far, descriptive. Chad's the only one that says he smells anything on me <laughs> right and i have maybe taken, that i have some so, organic after show i'm just saying maybe anyway. maybe it's actually chad we're smelling uh-huh. i don't know I, I, I you're both safe with me i got a cold so maybe that's cold. it Good. i can't Good. either praise one the lord. yeah praise the lord there you go uh, so you had a you got the this bobblehead jesus you also had what i was i was saying uh, earlier the goat of all sermon illustrations this lamb a little play on words there anyway so yeah i mean this this lamb you you pulled out i just i just had to just say that and just get that out there if you didn't listen to the sermon you need to listen to it my brother got a live lamb on stage i thought for real you were going to slaughter this lamb that would have been did. bad. <laughs> I was waiting. Bad. Uh, there it is. What, there it three is. minutes that we were going to do that. <laughs> and so, um, but to less to what you're saying, that this is such a meaty book. I just had to kind of call back to the lamb and um, and just say thank you, first of all, for bringing the word of God to life. And then second of all, that's a key theme all throughout the book of Hebrews and the sacrificial system and all of that. And so, yeah, it's, it's a meaty book for sure. Actually, mm-hmm. uh, the author of Hebrews is going to say later, uh, I wish you would move on to the meat of of God, and, and right. so he's going to use that phrase later on, jumping ahead of the gun. But no, that's and, and I did too, and that's I was excited. That's going to be a difficult thing for me is is, is not trying to, to keep it in here. So, Pastor Phil, you have to rein us in a little bit and, and make sure we stay on task here. So, as l- let me ask this question: What was going on at the time? Who was this message? Who was the Book of Hebrews to? Um, wh- what what was it like? At the time, why was it directed at the Jews? Why are we yeah. using the Book of Hebrews? You're asking, all the, you're asking all the right questions, and mm-hmm. I answer a lot of that in the intro lesson. Mm-hmm. So Sunday uh, was the opening Sunday morning sermon, but there's going to be four or five, maybe six other lessons uh, that we supplement the Sunday teaching with. Again, there's just so much content here. can't do it all on Sunday. So I did an overview, kind of an intro of the book of Hebrews that mm-hmm. people can access now right. as a part of the series in Hebrews. It's shot in one of our studios. So it's really important you might listen to that because that really gives an overview of the book of Hebrews. You answer all those questions. Anytime you start to study any book of the Bible, you ask some basic questions. Historically, what happened? Um, to whom was it written? Mm-hmm. By whom was it written? Why was it written? And so that begins establishing context. And so much of the Bible is taken out of context. Yep. Right. So you answer these questions up front to put it in its proper context. So um, this question is really easy to answer. You don't need a PhD, Doctor of Divinity. By the way, did you know we have a doctor at the table? That's right. We do. Doctor hey, Glover. Doctor Glover. Do I have to? Can I still call you Chad? Or Please. I, yeah. I, I okay. Like I need to salute when I'm around. Doctor Chad. Uh, no, just yeah. saying. You ain't fixing a broken bone or anything. No, no. I have before, but you know, right. I get called Doctor Phil all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole different show. Yeah, it's a right. whole different show, yeah. whole different, a whole different Phil. And yeah, I, and I seldom correct them. Yeah, um, I understand. I'm not a doctor. Okay, just be clear here. But um, this is easy. You don't need a doctor to any answer the question. To whom is it written? The title of the book is Hebrews. Hebrews. Boy, the Bible's deep, uh, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Right. It's written to the Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Specifically, it's written to first century Hebrews, Jewish people that had embraced the Jewish Messiah, Jesus, now following Jesus. Now, the problem is all they've ever known is the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, Mm -hmm. law. Now they're living in a new covenant, grace. All they've ever known is the Torah and the sacrificial system, the five offerings of the ancient Hebrew. Uh, The idea that I don't have to go to the temple now to worship. The idea that I don't have to bring a blood offering of a lamb or a bull or a goat. Uh, And so what's happened? They're stuck. Mm -hmm. They've taken the first step. They've embraced Jesus as the Messiah, but they're still trying to live in the Old Covenant. They're straddling the line between Old Covenant and New Covenant. Mm -hmm. One foot in the New Covenant, one foot in the Old Covenant. And so the writer of Hebrews is writing to them to say, hey, we have a better covenant. Leave the old behind. We have a better sacrifice. Leave the old behind. We have a better temple. Leave the old behind. We have better promises. Leave the old behind. 
Uh, he's trying to get them to see that Jesus is the one. He's the one we've been waiting for for centuries. He's the fulfillment of all the prophecies. Man, take your next step. Quit getting stuck spiritually. You got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm by leaving behind the old and fully embracing the new. That's why he's writing the Hebrews. And some of them are in danger. And you can see the emotion, the passion come out in his voice. Some of them are in danger of falling back into the bondage of the old covenant, back into the bondage of keeping a list of things to do. When Jesus said, it is finished mm -hmm. and there's nothing left to do. Yeah, And so he's really writing to encourage them, to give them the bump they need uh, to, to sell out completely and, and follow Jesus. And you have to put it in historical context. This has been so hard to do. Imagine, we learn in Acts chapter 6 that many priests had come to faith in Jesus. So yeah. there have been hundreds of temple priests at the time of Christ, mm -hmm. Levites. And we learn that many of them were coming to faith in Jesus. Now imagine, all you've ever known is going to work at the temple. Right making one sacrifice after another, uh, and all the things that came with temple worship. It's a culture shock. How do you not? Now yeah, I don't have to do they're that. Having to, they're having to unlearn. I mean, they're having to deconstruct. And I've, and I've said many times, Chad, look, it's true of all of us 2,000 years later. Sometimes the hardest thing about learning the Bible is unlearning what you thought sure. you learned right. about the Bible. Right. Absolutely. Most people can't do that. Mm -hmm. Most people aren't willing to do that. To unlearn what I thought I learned, to learn what God wants me to learn, mm -hmm. is very very risky dangerous sure what are the implications well my family was wrong i was taught this from the time as a child my mom and dad was wrong grandma and grandpa that's what these early hebrews oh, are man. doing uh not only do you have a lot of priests that are coming to faith trying to put away the only thing they ever knew the way of life not just a religion uh, but by tradition imagine this you're living in jerusalem a uh, devout jewish family three o'clock in the afternoon the time of prayer. Everyone goes to the temple to go through that same religious motion, that same religious routine. Your entire family goes except for you. They come back and they are livid. Why didn't you go to the temple with us? It was a better way. Well, mm -hmm. there's a better way. There's a better way. The it's Messiah has come. His That's name right. is Jesus. Now, guess what That's happens right. next? You are literally kicked out of your family. Your table, your, your 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 plate is turned over at the table. You are mm -hmm. dead to your family, mm -hmm. which today remains one of the reasons why it's so hard for Jews to come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see why these early Christian Hebrews were really having a difficult time taking the next step. They wanted to follow Jesus. They believed he was the Messiah. But they're really having a hard time putting behind them all the elements of the old covenant to fully embrace the new. Yeah, and I, I love the uh, you know some of the graphic art that we have with this series is the equal sign with a slash through it mm -hmm. because it it's it's helping you know the artistically display I would say one of the key themes of Hebrews that is Jesus plus nothing equals everything, and so I think even understanding that cultural backdrop it helps you almost uh, get into the the mindset of the audience going man I I need to understand the implications as to why Jesus is better, and then we're going to get into it. I mean, all throughout Hebrews, he's going to peel back layer after layer after layer of how Jesus is above it all. And uh, and so, yeah, this this audience, this background, all authorship, that's so important to understand when we're studying the Bible. Yeah, it is. And uh, just a, a quick little side note, but I'll say this because it's our first episode and we're kicking off the well here. I feel like it's important to understand because the Bible tells us that we're supposed to to dig into Scripture like we're looking for hidden treasure. And it really is treasure. I mean, it's the most worthy treasure we could ever have but it's also important to really understand that's why i asked the question at the beginning pastor phil of of helping us understand the times because that can also understanding the history and where they're it. at it magnifies it but it also allows us to understand it practically yes. because the bible isn't just a history book that you got in eighth grade it is history but it's also truth in the way of life just as relevant today as it was back then as it was 150 years ago a thousand years ago as it was two minutes ago so it, it i just think it's really important to, to remind people to understand sure. this is hidden treasure dig into it and if you really want to discover it and you really want to know you can really apply this because it is relevant now mm -hmm. yeah in the way chad put it so right the bible's written in layers yeah uh what we'd really like to do is just stay on that first layer 
it's easy to access mm-hmm. give me a little daily bread just a little morsel just enough to keep going right yeah but you know what it says in second timothy two sixteen: study to show yourself approved unto god a workman or a work woman that needs not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so the implication is it's going to take work yeah to peel back all the layers but the idea, as I said Sunday, we don't ever get to choose a church. Do we want to be deep or wide? Like, are you a discipleship church or are you an evangelistic church? Right. Do you reach people or do you want to teach people? False it's dichotomy. A, it's a false yeah. dichotomy. Mm-hmm. We need to reach everyone we can that's far from God. That's going to make us a wide church, meaning we have a growing footprint of the gospel. That's right. At Abundant Life. Taking the gospel, new places to reach new people all over North America and around the world. That's the beautiful thing. We're a wide church now with a wide reach, but this is the well. This is the well, man. This is the well. And we're going to drink deeply. That's Believe right. it. And That's we're right. going to dive deep into the Word of God. That's mm-hmm. what we're doing the Well Podcast for, to give us a chance to really do that together. So we've answered, to whom is it written? And it's still relevant, as you said. Listen, we're not today, most of us aren't Hebrews. Mm-hmm. We're 21st century non-Jewish believers, but think about this. They were stuck in tradition, Mm -hmm. so they were having a really hard time following Jesus because of religion. They were keeping a list of things to do when there was no longer a list of things to do. Jesus did everything to do, right? And we still do it today in, in various ways. My wife was raised in a tradition that when she learned what it meant to really be born again, redemption versus religion it was really really hard for her it was hard for her mom and dad it was hard for her sisters because this was like to them it's an attack on our family yeah Mm -hmm. it's all we've ever known it's all we've ever done this goes back generations what are you saying right and what what i see right now if i could just jump in is uh there is like this buzzword of of deconstructing you know Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that are deconstructing deconstruction and and that's not necessarily a, a bad thing the problem is, is that most people in society right now, I get to work with a lot of young people, and this is a really prevalent thing, is that they're deconstructing and they're never reconstructing anything. And uh, and so they're they're just tearing down maybe a tradition or something they grew up in, but then they're just really metaphorically walking around with a bunch of shambles. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think a study of the Word of God is so important because, yeah, it does need to challenge your traditions. It does need to challenge your upbringing, your worldview. And the Bible has a way of doing that. And it's okay to to deconstruct some things, but we come to the Word of God to allow the Word of God and the Spirit of God to rebuild our way and our understanding based upon His Word. Yeah. And uh, and that's that's easier said than done. And and so again, for me, I empathize with the audience here and uh, that's in the Bible, and then also in my own upbringing, even my own life right now, there are things that I think are right, but then I start reading the Word of God, and we're going to see later in Hebrews that it. It's a sharp sword, man. It's going to divide you and cut you in all of the right ways, mm-hmm. and uh, and I and I need that and I want that because I want to be a man that's that's marked by the book, that's marked by the Word of God. Amen. I don't want to be a man that's marked by my own ideology, um, and and I have to unlearn some things. Yeah, at time. that's good. In the age of deconstruction, where people are walking away from the faith, deconstructing the faith. Here, here's what they're deconstructing: they're deconstructing churchianity. That's right. Mm-hmm. They're not deconstructing Christianity. Mm-hmm. They're deconstructing religion. They're not deconstructing redemption. You know why? Christianity cannot be deconstructed because you cannot deconstruct the resurrection. Amen. That's right. It's built on the resurrection and an honest intellectual approach to the resurrection can only lead to one conclusion. Hmm. In all probability, it happened. Jesus Jesus is is better. better. He's alive. That's right. So what are people deconstructing? They're deconstructing church culture they're deconstructing church tradition uh but as you said they're not reconstructing right like we've all if you're raised in church you've had to unlearn some things you learn Mm -hmm. some things i learned that i thought was actually in the bible it's not in the bible it was never in the bible it was built on denominational tradition and people confuse that denominational tradition for New Testament doctrine, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. That is why Hebrews is still relevant today. The moment you start keeping a list of things to do to approach God, you're back in the law now. Mm-hmm. You've got one foot in the Old Covenant again. It's a different mm-hmm. list than the ancient Hebrews, but a list nonetheless. And that list is what keeps a lot of people in the bondage. Uh, that Hebrews 2 is talking about, the bondage of religion versus the joy 
of living in redemption. Right. Now, Phil, I wanted to double click on something because we're we're, we're in this um, we're in this series, deep Bible study, and I wanted to double click on something that you were talking about on Sunday. You were calling us to study the Word of God, and uh, and I just want a little bit more of what what does that look like for you? You know, I, I respect the mess out of you, and I just love the way you preach. I love what you know about God because that's helped me learn some new things about God. And uh, second, I, I, I like to joke around. Uh, with Phil that uh, I'm like, bro, you got a photographic memory. He's like, no, I don't. You know, we're just a couple of meatheads. You know, he played college football, I played college football, and and I just got, just imagine us like after Sundays, just like headbutt each other, like, yeah, that was awesome. You I know? could see that. Yeah, um, and uh, and so I just I just marvel at the way that God has gifted you and at the way that you know God's word. And so I, I joke with him. You got a photographic memory? He's like, no, I don't. I said, well, how do you memorize scripture? He said, we well, just read it. I was like, yes, that means you have a crappy memory. You don't have note cards or flash systems. And he's like, no, you just read it and, you know, then you just say it, you know. Yeah, like, that's no, an amazing that's giftedness. Gift. Yeah. But but I also think that there's like this perception of like, you know, the Holy Spirit nudges Pastor Phil in the morning and says, hey, buddy, it's time to get up. I want to show you the marvelous things from my book. And then Phil sets next to the Bible and, you know, Jesus and Holy Spirit, God the Father are all there. And they're just like just downloading all of this divine wisdom into your life. And and you you shared a little bit about what it looks like practically to study the Bible. But, you know, I think people are listening to this, watching this. And uh, if they know you, they probably have the same respect of you. If they don't know you, they just need to listen to you preach a couple of times and mm-hmm. they'll, they'll get the idea. But functionally, if I'm studying the Bible, uh, I'm starting the book of Hebrews. What are some basic tools that you would recommend me to get? Uh, how do I need to learn this book along with you? Because you're about to drop, you know, you drop some stuff in our lap on Sunday. You're going to drop some stuff in our laps in the Sundays to come. And and I know that I'm going to be reading the same Bible going, where did he get that? So functionally, here's the deal, Chad. Functionally speaking, you start first thing in the morning with a pot of coffee. <laughs> amen. A Thank you. And amen. We don't yeah. go any further than a pot of coffee. Hebrews. Uh, see what I'm saying? There it is. People ask yeah, sometimes man. on Sunday. So, Phil, how do you do it on Sundays? It's easy. The Holy Spirit in five hour energy. Hey, man. Thank God for <laughs> that. Right, okay. There are no there are so, no sponsors happening during no, this podcast. No. <laughs> okay. So in all seriousness, uh, I admire the fact that Chad Glover went out uh, an esteemed university seminary and got his doctorate, your PhD. What did you get your doctorate in? It's in education. In education. Yeah, ministry. So it's a ministry. combination of theology, how to teach theology, all of that and stuff. And there's incredible merit. There's value in that. Mm-hmm. But what I want people to know is you don't have to right. do that to learn the deepest things of the Word of God. Whether you're Paul the Apostle with a formal education uh, as a Pharisee, went to the finest seminary, sat at the feet of Gamaliel, the esteemed theological professor of his day, Mm -hmm. right? Or you're an uneducated commercial fisherman like Peter. (laughs) Look how God used these men, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. So I don't want to minimize formal education at all. But on the other hand, no one should feel like, man, I just can never access the deepest parts of God's Word without it. Not true. Because mm-hmm. you have a promise. If, you, if you're a child of God, you've been born again by faith in the Son of God, you're now filled with the Spirit of God, mm-hmm. and you got your hands on the Word of God. That's right. That means you got everything you need to access the deepest elements of the Word of God. So functionally, what, what, is, what, is, uh, what is it for me, for Pastor Phil? Well, uh, I've been giving it away for 24 years. If people will go through discipleship too. So we have discipleship one. Mm-hmm. Many years ago, that's where it began for me. Something similar. It's not the curriculum, but the idea of reproduction of a more mature believer coming alongside another, like a Paul Timothy kind of relationship. Well, I had somebody do that for me many years ago. Uh, one of the first things we brought to Abundant Life was a discipleship philosophy of ministry, of reproduction, one on one, small group, because you can. You can teach what you know, but you reproduce what you are. Right. 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 Now, well here's said. what happens next at Abundant Life. Teaching has to be systematic. It's intentional. You don't start kindergartners with calculus. You teach them first how to add and subtract. So there's the milk of God's word, discipleship one. 
But you are right. You're going to see in Hebrews, he's saying, you guys should be going on to the meat of God's word. You're still on milk. Mm -hmm. Process of growth is you grow up spiritually the way you do physically, from infancy to maturity. Nobody here, I don't think, Chad, uh, you would be satisfied with a glass of milk for supper. You need a little more substance yeah. than that. I'm a, I'm Me a too. mistake, man. Me too. So discipleship two, we teach 21 laws of Bible study or 21 keys of Bible study. These keys are how you access every single element on every single page of God's Word. When you know how to use the keys and which keys to use, it unlocks every page of Scripture. There's no mystery here. God has not given us His written revelation to hide Himself, but to reveal Himself. Sure, that's right. And as I said Sunday, you can't separate the Word of God from the Son of God. Don't mm -hmm. tell me you're following the Son of God if you're not following the Word of God, because if you're not following the Word of God, a this Jesus. is all you got, a bobblehead Jesus. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of denominations, this is what they got. Sure. And sadly, that's uh, enough for us. For a lot of Christians, self prophet this is this is him. Yeah. Jesus doesn't make you change a thing. He didn't command, he didn't demand. <laughs> uh, we, we, we command him to think he would command us. You got a mascot, you don't got a Messiah. Right. So if you will take... Let's say discipleship two. Learn the 21 tools. I call them, look, a carpenter has a tool belt. He's got certain tools he uses every single time. Mm -hmm. uh, and Chad, you're a very, very handy, mm -hmm. mechanically minded craftsman, very skilled. What would be a tool or two that you would use every single time if you were going to build something? Well, the thing I would use is a, a Milwaukee power tool, baby. Milwaukee, Milwaukee power tool. Yep. I ain't no DeWalt. We ain't, you know, I ain't hating on that. I'd use it if I had <laughs> I to. I wouldn't but, know the difference. But a Milwaukee power tool. So that's the that's the, like the name brand. That's, that's the cool it, brand. man. That's okay. it. Milwaukee's it the way to go. Yeah. There it is. You yeah. should see my toolbox. I've never seen a Milwaukee in your toolbox. You won't find a Milwaukee <laughs> in my toolbox. Uh, but you will find a hammer. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, you will find a screwdriver. Right, these are basic tools. Yeah, I, I remember seeing some of your handiwork. <laughs> and let's it, it, if a tape measure better be in both the yeah. but Have a tape measure <laughs> better be. I'd say it starts I don't, there. I don't use it nearly often enough. Okay. He's a far Literally. better preacher than he is a carpenter. Okay. Measure twice, cut some once. Some things right? you can eyeball. Some things you should measure. Here's the point I'm making: these tools, some of which you use every time. We talked about one context principle of context. Uh, that's that's a tool you use every time you study the Word of God. How do you do it? Ask the to whom was it written? When was it written? You're establishing context. Mm -hmm. Here's one, just not to not to miss this, but just a good study Bible. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the tape measure you were talking about. Right. You know, and, and we talk about it at Abundant Life, the New King James Version. Uh, you said this earlier, the Nelson. So, what? like, my favorite study Bible would be the Nelson New King James Version, and I like it not only for the the translation and the precision of the translation, but man, it's got some fantastic commentary, sure. some mm -hmm. real quality notes, right? And one of the things I'd add is that, uh, yeah, I mean, if somebody has access to take D2, yes, yes and amen. If you have the opportunity to, to buy a Milwaukee or receive a Milwaukee tool, man, you would be foolish not to get that. Same with this Bible study tool, but just a basic thing, it, it, you know, we've, we've kind of kicked around the ball of education, all that stuff, but here's what I've learned that, that you you just got to get in the word that, that if you you said it already if you have the word of god and the spirit of god and you read it man god will, he will inform you he will teach you yeah. mm -hmm. now should you get better yes but but you don't have to you don't have to complicate yeah. this thing and we want people to read along with us and let but, me be clear look what like when i say new king james is my preferred teaching tool because i really believe in the precision of the language Mo modern translations largely are paraphrases by nature, they're not translations, meaning they're a thought for thought versus a word for word. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do a Bible study, you need something more reliable, not just readable. You, sure. you can't study words that aren't there. Right. So that's why it's been my teaching. But, but at the same time, look, there's a lot of quality translations out there. Right. And it can get intimidating. Uh, I mean, there can. are people out there that, yeah. that are, well, I, I want to do that, mm -hmm. but I feel like that this particular Bible that I have, it, it just I, I don't understand it, if, and if, so I have to must be something used wrong to reading with the me NIV. Or? Keep reading the NIV. Sure, but just understand it's a really good paraphrase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a word for word translation, right? Uh, NASB, a really good word for word translation. It's not bad. I prefer the New King James. Mm -hmm. 
NASB's word for word ESV is really popular right now, really trendy, really hip, really cool. Things come and go. Mm-hmm. It, right now, it's it's the hip, cool translation. I don't know why for sure, but it's the one a lot of my friends are using. Uh, I have one particular issue with it out of Malachi 5 too. I can't. <laughs> We're going to need a whole another podcast to, to get it all that. But here's we'll the point of all that. <laughs> I'm not saying you can only use New King James. Anything else is, I'm just saying you need a quality right. translation that's word for word. If you're going to study the Bible and just read the Bible. In and a book like Hebrews, too, that we're going through, I mean, there's a lot there. Yeah, yes. and then a good quality study Bible is really helpful. Nelson makes one. Uh, MacArthur has a great study Bible uh, with a lot of great notes. He's going to be far more scholastic in some ways. But but let me finish. Look, these 21 laws of Bible study, some tools, some law you use every time, context. Then you have specialty tools. You only use on occasion. A good carpenter knows when to use them. Right. What would be a specialty tool? You only use once in a while. Um, a uh, bell skiver, thins leather. How do you spell that? I, yeah, I, I don't even know. What don't, you just don't said. ask me to spell. Clearly, it. especially it's it. not yeah. in my toolbox, me right? Mm-hmm. Here, the twenty-one laws of Bible study. You learn what tools to use mm-hmm. and when. And the key thing is learning to compare scripture with scripture. Yeah, that is when the light bulb comes on. So functionally, that's what it is for me to sit down, begin to study the Word of God, connecting the dots. I've said many years. Study, but studying the Bible is like doing a dot to dot. When you're a kid, there's a picture on the page. You don't see the picture till you connect the dots. That's right. Mm-hmm. You don't connect the dots to Scripture unless you're comparing Scripture to Scripture. Well, here's the point: Hebrews over and over again is quoting oh, Old the, Testament yeah. passages. Right. But if people don't know it, it makes no sense to them. Right. Yeah, uh, the book of Leviticus is quoted fourteen times alone, just in the book of Leviticus. No wonder it's so confusing for modern readers. Because how many modern Christians study the book of Leviticus? Right, we do. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. We have. Well, right. sidebar: we we have preached Leviticus. <laughs> we did verse mm-hmm. by verse, which is why it's really important to go over the overview, the intro lesson mm-hmm. I did, mm-hmm. where I go over the five offerings of the ancient Hebrews. That's mm-hmm. going to be a central theme. People can find that on the website, right? They can find that. They can still find that on our sermon page. Yeah. As we close, this seems like five minutes already, and we could continue to go. And I'm so glad that we're going to continue to dive into the book of Hebrews for a long time, any book for that matter. But I want to close with this. And and this is what I, I once read a book. I can't even remember what it is, which when I give you the quote, it'll make sense. But it said, sometimes a book doesn't move you not not definitely not talking about the bible sure. here but maybe it's maybe it's a chapter or a paragraph or a line and as i was sitting through the sermon this sunday this kind of this nailed me and it, it caught me and i'll be honest with you pastor phil i didn't hear the next two minutes of what you said because i was stuck on this but you said christ is more than god's messenger he's god's message and i absolutely love that and it's just something for us to remember that God didn't just send his son to die for us as, well, Well, th- this is my son. Yes, that's him. But he's not just my messenger. He's God, and he's the message. He is my love message. So profound, yet so simple, and just truth. Yeah, yeah. It's, how, it's how the writer here opens up. I keep saying writer. Answer the question, who wrote it? Well, nobody knows for sure. <laughs> right. That's the honest answer. He was Jewish. Yeah. Uh, one can argue for Paul. I'm going with the Apostle Paul. A lot of people argue for Barnabas. There's reasons for that, too. Both of those are good arguments. It's a guess. There's a reason I'm convinced whoever wrote it didn't sign it. The number one persecutors of early Christianity was guess who? He was not the Romans. It was other Jews. That's right. So a Jewish man, very, very, very steeped in Jewish tradition, Old Testament Levitical system, a Pharisee, clearly, somebody who's deeply trained theologically, like the Apostle Paul, perhaps Barnabas, wrote this letter to the ancient Hebrews, didn't sign it, probably because it would only bring more heat on them if they did, Mm -hmm. if it fell into the wrong hands. This was a very dangerous letter. Mm Mm-hmm. So the early readers, the ones who received it initially knew who it was from, didn't need to be signed. They knew who it was from. Now that's been lost to time. What we know is he opens up this way for a reason. God, 
Hebrews 1 and verse 1, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. Uh, as you said, he's trying to show them, huh, we have a better messenger than yeah. any prophet. Right. We don't need a messenger. We have the Messiah. Mm -hmm. He is more than simply God's revelation. He is God revealed. The Word of God becoming flesh. The living Word came to show the written Word. And as you said, are we more impacted by words on a page, words that we read, words that somebody says, or are we more impacted by what we see? Mm. Yeah. God sent Jesus so we could see his word, not just read his word. Mm -hmm. You know what a blessing it is to be able to sit here with you too? Man, I'm excited. This is episode one. This yeah, is, baby. That's amazing. Thank you guys. Days for, are on the way. I, I got to uh, add one thing. Yeah. Man. And uh, I know do. we're wrapping up, but, yeah, do but I've been itching to say this. I was hoping we would turn a corner and get, get to something you know, that uh, we talked about this this Sunday is not only that, that Jesus come in – um, and be the word made flesh so that we can see him. But when early on, I mean, it's right here in verse three, it says that Jesus himself purged our sins. And I've just been, I've been hanging on that word purge. Mm -hmm. And um, the the thing I wanted to just add to this, I don't know if anyone has this, this experience, but we are on the cusp. Y'all probably don't know this, but we are on the cusp of one of the greatest seasons of all year. It, we're on the cusp of crawfish season. Did y'all know that? <laughs> I did not yeah. know that. Yeah, y'all probably did not know that because it's really not a thing here. We're going to have us a crawfish boil. I don't know that we can aff afford to import them up this far in the Midwest Isn't or they even like be a, that good. A, a crawfish at Touffet or something oh, yeah, like you, that. Yeah, stop. It's the you're only making thing me. I... You're, you're making me hungry. <laughs> all right. And um, and when I think about purging, that's the word that comes to my mind is is you purge crawfish when you're getting ready to have a crawfish bowl. And uh, and I say bull wrong, I know, uh, but that's why I'm from Texas, and and so in in, in Texas and in the South, in Louisiana, well, yeah, and yeah. so well, yeah. it's actually Louisiana. That's right, and it's just it, no no syllables there, so or very few, excuse me, and um and when you purge the crawfish, what you're doing is you're preparing them to be bulled, and uh, and you're getting all of the stuff out out of them when you're purging them, hmm. that you're removing what is what is gross from the inside of that that animal, that crustacean. And and the reason why I bring all that up is I just been hung up on this that Jesus is man, he is the the word of God made flesh, he is the example. But man, he purged what was gross inside of me. He purged it out. Because of his blood, we you know, we we're not just covered over, but we're washed on the inside. And I just love this verse. He says that you know, he in verse 3 uh, it says, when he had by himself purged our sin. And I'm just, man, that just fires me up. And so I know somebody's listening to this, somebody's watching this, and hopefully they're getting inspired about how Jesus is better. But I'm just sitting over here thinking, man, Jesus, he purged me of the sin that was so in, ingrained inside of me. And so every time I see a, you know, a little kiddie pool full of crawfish and they're purging them, getting ready to, you know, go to the next step of the process, I just think, man, that's what God did for me. He got what was nasty, the sin on the inside mm -hmm. of me. It got it out. So yeah. I just needed to share that. Just have I've just been excited about that. Yeah, all that's week. so good. It's a good Chad. word, Chad. That's so good, Chad. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Well, as we close, um, let's just remind everybody we know we've got people obviously watching, but there's also people that are listening that aren't watching. And right. so if you tell anybody about this, you can just go to livingproof.co slash podcast and you have the choice to watch, to listen either way. But uh, thanks guys. Chad, will you close us in prayer? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for today. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it has so many layers and has a, the ability that when we read it, you read us. And God, we just thank you for the way that it teaches us about you and Jesus, I just I just declare that you are better. Uh, you're better than anything I could have given my life to. Jesus, you're better than any other gods. You're better than any other thing. And we just thank you that we don't have to magnify your worth. We don't have to embellish who you are. We don't have to exaggerate who you are. You're just who you are. 
and you're better than all of those things. And so, God, we we do shine the spotlight the spotlight on you, and we just say thank you, thank you, thank you for your salvation. God, we say thank you for uh, these men and for this opportunity just to be able to gather around your word and to learn and to and to grow. And God, I pray for the person that's listening to this, that's watching this, that you would just inform their hearts, that you would grow them spiritually as you grow them scripturally and that you would allow our church and you allow the church to know the word of God so that we wouldn't settle for any sort of uh, bobblehead Jesus, if you will. And God, we love you and pray that you would shape us and you would form us into your likeness. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you for stopping by the Well Podcast. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you found this podcast helpful in any kind of way, be sure to share it with your friends. For any other information, please visit livingproof.co and we pray that you would have a blessed day.